Oh. Uh. Oh, slow train coming. Uh, no, it was a slow train to Georgia by Tavares. Uh, your second bonus question. Who had a number two hit in 1989 with his cover of an amorphous Blamont track? Right, lads. We've got a lot on today. But before we get started, I've had this memo from management. Oh, good. The management. <laughs> they want to know what we think about repeating the message. You what? Repeating the message. They're producing some training materials about reading back safety critical information to make sure that it's understood properly. And they want us to help. Ah, short of ideas, are they? Whatever. Have you got any? I thought they were the ones paid to think. And that's what they're doing. They think that we'll give it a bit more credibility and help the lads to speak safely on the phone. So, I thought we'd have a bit of a brainstorm. Brainstorm? Have you been on a course again? Darren, you any thoughts? Well, when you consider the extraordinary volume of communications transmitted by phone or radio throughout the railway on a daily basis, potentially safety critical errors probably happen every few minutes. You are? I think you'll also find these are not the errors of lazy or unskilled communicators, but simply a natural feature of how we all speak and listen. Eh? Hey? It's sobering to think that sometime during the course of your career, you could be responsible for an error in communication, which compromises safety. Or in Bob's case, every time he ums his mouth. <laughs> right, so what you're saying is these problems are not because we're born idle or stupid. Well, I don't, don't even think about it. They're just a normal part of being human. Yeah, right. So there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, of course there is. For every problem, there's a solution. What about Bob's digestive system? <laughs> we all recognise that people make mistakes. That's as true for Doug as it is a proper manager. But having accepted that, you can then formulate a strategy or process to mitigate the problem. Mitigate the problem? Do something about it. Right. So what do we do about it? Something you do every day anyway. What's that? Well, take you and your lady wife, for example. Hey, where are you going here? Shall I go to the shops, dear? Good idea, darling. We're running a little low on pâté foie gras, aromatic phyllo tartlets and prawn balls. <laughs> You'll have prawn balls in a minute. All right. Baked beans and ham. Right, oh dear. I'll get some cake, greens and jam. No, baked beans and ham, you dozy article. You do it all the time. You bat it back. You do what? Look at it this way. Say, I'm a signaller, and this ping-pong ball is the message. You look like a wazzock with no friends to me. <laughs> Imagine I'm a signaller, trying to communicate with you, a brain-dead lummox from Cleck Eaton. This ball is the message, which includes the location name Newton Street. I bat it over to you. But you receive the message as Newsome Street, a completely different place, because the phone line's crap. How'd you do that? If you don't bat it back, you won't know whether Newsome Street is genuine or has been distorted on the way. Sounds familiar. So, rather than leave any doubt, you bat the message back. Effectively saying, I've heard Newsome Street, is that right? So, of course, I say negative. It's Newton Street. Repeat, November Echo, Whiskey Tango, Oscar November. And the message is rescued. Yeah, well, ping-pong's not a proper sport, is it? Well, if it was your football team, it'd be hack it back. We are not a dirty side. Only because the laundrette sponsors your shirts. Well, let's change wood for grass. Say Terry throws the ball out to Alan on the wing. The ball is the message. It relates to signal 142. Alan receives 142, but for some reason his brain takes it in as 152. Unless Alan boots it back, he won't know he's going to the wrong signal. And if Alan doesn't boot it back, Terry won't know he's got it wrong. To protect both of them, Alan! Terry needs to remind Alan to repeat the message back. That way, the error is spotted and corrected before it becomes a problem. This is all very interesting, but what do I tell management? We won't have effective communication on the railway until FIFA changed the backpass rule. No, what we need is my bat it back campaign. If somebody doesn't repeat back to you what you've just told them, and they've actually misheard it, they might end up thinking that you've told them incorrectly, and you're to blame. So when you hear safety critical information, read it back. If you give safety critical information, don't get off the line until you've heard it back. Bat it back. Boat it back. Read it back. 
In safety critical communications, you can't have too many repeats. Get the message? Right. Well, you seem to have got that sorted, Darren. Have you got a couple of minutes? We've got a bit of a problem trying to get the trains to run on time. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I do, actually. What you need is my new Pathfinder software. It's an integrated route planning solution.